welcome back to the Wrestling with the Faith podcast, everybody, where a group of everyday people meet and discuss a passage from the Bible and wrestle with what that means in our modern day lives. Um, my name is Evan. I'm joined by Dave and Laurel. So a little bit slim, slim down group from, from most weeks. Um, but this week we're going to be discussing Acts 4, 5 through 12. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Cephas, uh, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. So this is a common theme, right? Is this <clears throat> this idea that it's through Jesus's name uh, and through Jesus that all this happens? And so... <clears throat> The question is, and lots of people recite this as this is the exclusivity of being a Christian, right? It, the only Christians got it right. Um, and, I, you know, and so um, I, I, to me, when I read this, I, it, it really just points to he, he was really throwing it in the face of the, um, the leaders saying, you crucified the person who were doing this. In, the, in his name. And so it was really just kind of saying, you got it really wrong. And uh, <clears throat> which I think is uh, really kind of the crux of the, of the acts of the apostles and, you know, and, and what happens next. And so, uh, which is great. But then I wonder now um, when we look back on that, it, was that what it really meant? Was it only that, uh, that Jesus is the only way to God or is it that Jesus was the was God on earth and is the only person that really is a representative of God on earth? And, uh, and so that, that's one that's really hard to wrestle with a little bit. Yeah, because if you think of, you know, Jesus really being the only representative of God, you know, for, for me initially thinking is like, okay, well, for, I mean, and granted, going always going back to you know us being human not being perfect but you know i would have thought of our like us as christians kind of as being representative of god while you know we're made in his image we're not well we're not always perfect um you know kind of i think as we've discussed previously our our jobs as christians is showing what showing God's love to others, um, showing that compassion, that support to everybody, which makes me think of us as being representative. So it's, it's kind of, what does that, if, if Jesus was the only representative of God being, you know, God made human, you know, what, what does that make the rest of us? (laughs) Yeah, I, I think it was, he's really referring to, other gods of the time, if you will, you know, and then also that the Pharisees many times, you know, said things like, I have got this figured out. And I'm the reason that, you know, this is how you should, you should act. And, and I think he was pointing out that really there's only one person that, that is showing us how the way, and that is Jesus, as opposed to um, kind of a defiant way to say Jews were wrong or other people were wrong uh, or, or Gentiles were wrong. It was really about, about um, 
pastors of that time, if you will, or, or rabbis of that time, that many of them said that they had it figured out and the Pharisees had it figured out. And really what, what he's saying, I think, there in that last line is Jesus is the actual, this is the only one who actually had it completely right. And, uh, and, and I think it's more that than it is this exclusivity, exclusivity, the exclusivity thing that we have about 2000 years later where some Christians say, well, no, it's, it's this or it's this and we're in and you're out. It's more, it was really more just saying that there were a lot of people trying to say they represented God and they really understood what God meant. And really the only one who really did was Jesus. Yeah, I mean, cause like, I think one of the things I don't know if I can't, can't remember if I've mentioned here before. Um, and I know isn't always a popular opinion among a lot of people, but to me, you know, I kind of view, I mean, obviously you have Judaism, which, you know, Christian Christianity came from because Jesus was a Jew initially, but then you also look at um, like Islam and, and, to me, it's, you know, everybody's kind of looking at the same God because they all, like, they all came from the same region and kind of the same time frame. And, and to me, it's, you know, all, all three, I think, tell or teach very similar lessons. And to me, you know, it's kind of all looking at the same God. It's just coming at it from different ways. And that's where, I mean, again, where our beliefs as Christians is that Jesus was the son of God and, you know, was reborn and died for our sins. So it's, to, to me, you know, like kind of that exclusivity again, it's, it's I, I think everybody's kind of tangent or oh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of. Up, up along each other, we're, we're on, on similar paths, I guess. Yeah, I, though the other thing that was I thought was unique in this was it, it talked about him being full of the Holy Spirit before he said anything, because remember, mm -hmm. Jesus just got done telling the Pharisees they were wrong, and look what happened to him. And now Peter's in there doing the exact same thing. He cures, they cure somebody and then they refer to the guy that they just crucified and they throw it right in their face. And, and so when I thought of, um, you know, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, it was he had the guts to go in there and do it. And he needed the Holy Spirit to help him. And uh, he, was, he was the one that betrayed Jesus, too, initially. So he was kind of had his doubts, you know, was proven wrong. And I think, yeah. It was probably one of those, you know, like a lot of us, I think nowadays, you know, there's certain things where you may be uncomfortable or afraid to speak up. And, you know, in this instance, that's where, you know, the Holy Spirit came in and kind of gave him that courage, gave him that push mm -hmm. to, you know, say what needed to be said. Yeah, and you know, uh, us Lutherans don't really go out and profess our faith all that well. I mean, we act well, right? We go out and help people and, you know, show them you're Christian by your love kind of thing. But we don't really profess. And it's, I mean, it's almost ironic that we're called the Evangelical Lutheran <laughs> Church of America. I mean, come on now. Come on. And so Pastor told a oh, joke about joke it today. today. I was just thinking of that. He said uh, somebody, somebody who was half a Jehovah's Witness and half yeah. Lutheran. They walk up to the door, knock on the door, but they don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's that pretty funny. Pretty good. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> I mean, that, that is funny because, you know, especially for me, and it probably is because I, I grew up within Prince of Peace and, you know, that's that's where almost my entire Christian faith has come from was through, you know, how I grew up throughout Prince of Peace with everybody there is that it's it kind of it comes down to the you know actions speak louder than words kind of thing mm -hmm. where i think for some people and like even some some of my friends that aren't christian you know sometimes like christians can have a bad rap because you see some of like the you know the more extremes 
of, of certain things. And especially you get some, like when I was on at school, we'd have people on campus basically saying, you're going to hell if you don't do exactly what I say kind of the kind of deal. And I think that kind of gave people a bad rap or gave Christians a bad rap. Whereas, you know, I would like to think from my experiences with my, with those friends, the fact that for me, it's, it is more coming out of action and showing, you know, the love and compassion versus, you know, speaking it and then not do not following up with your actions, you know, talk the talk, but don't walk the walk kind of thing Um, that it, while, you know, some of them may not be comfortable coming to church quite yet, I think it helped to, to kind of paint Christianity in a better light for, for a lot of them. Yeah, the guy with the short sleeve, white shirt and a tie and a bullhorn yelling at, you know, standing on a bucket, you know, yelling. It just, I, I don't know. Maybe they just don't get, they don't understand that maybe how they're being perceived. Yeah. So, you know, when I think about this passage, I think about, you know, the whole idea of you show your Christian by your love, you know, you're going out and helping people. And, and there are those times in my life where people say, well, why are you, why are you helping? Why are you doing this? And I'm just like, that's just who I am. That's what I believe in, right? This idea of God's love and, and the love of Jesus and spreading that in the world. And, and that's kind of, that is the like rock on message, I think, of this particular one where he, they, you know, how are you do who, whose name are you doing this in? And he's very clear. Jesus is the rock. This is why I'm doing it because this is, this is the right person. And that, you know, and, and uh, that's in me and that's why I'm doing this. And so, and, and if you think about, you know, people do good deeds, you know, there's that old idea of if I do enough good deeds, I'll build my way to, you know, my stairway to heaven or whatever. And, I'll, you know, if I do enough good deeds and really it's more just what's motivating you to do to help your neighbor and to love your neighbor. And, and, and you know, maybe we as Lutherans don't say Jesus enough, but, uh, but that's clearly love is what does it. That's why we're doing what we do. So. Mm. And, and your your comment about, you know, having our feet on a rock makes me think of uh, one, of, one of the songs as I've been going through, especially as as we build up, um, you know, as, as we've talked, I think we, we mentioned a couple episodes ago that, you know, this this whole podcast came from initially our, our look at doing an alternative style worship service where it is this more kind of conversation wrestling together that me in my love of music have been compiling a playlist of song potential songs to try out and one of them made me think uh, my feet are on the rock by i am they and i'll have I'll get a link to, to Ben to include <laughs> in the description of the video. Um, but is one that it just, again, it's that kind of the same message of, you know, we've got solid ground under us from, from Jesus, our cornerstone that allows us to go out and has taught us to go out and show, show that love. Um, plus it's just a fun, uplifting song, <laughs> which is, which is always good. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I, I think, you know, when you think about this, it's not just about confronting the Pharisees. It's not just about healing the person. It's about if you have that fundamental peace to you that you feel more secure in everything that you're doing. And, and, and it really, it's just easier to, to show God's love in the world because you could feel it. You're, you're, it's something that's in you. It's something that you've kind of, you're, you're, it is the rock you're stepping on. And, and it's amazing how, no matter what you're doing in your life, how how much that matters when you're dealing with other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that that certainly, you know, again from from my my path, my growth, and my faith um, with both my my blood family and my church family that has shown that and has you know obviously. I've had doubts along the way. I mean, that's, that's why we're wrestling. Uh, that's why we continue to wrestle, but it having felt that love myself is what to me is, has given me that, you know, that solid ground 
to then go out and show that to others. And then, you know, it's kind of that domino effect. It just keeps piling on and, you know, gives the next person comfort and security to be able to then, you know, pass that along to others. And then, you know, as, as we talked about last episode of, you know, avoiding some of the negativity on social media, I, I think this kind of tags into that where it's, you know, you start showing that positivity, you give that positivity, that love to others. It just, that, that'll start to build and overcome all the drama that we humans love. <laughs> mm-hmm. To say that what you guys are saying about that love, I think if you have that, if you have that love, you're, um, it, it's, and it's genuine and you really genuinely love and want to love other people. And it, it shows, it kind of shows, um, as opposed to perhaps some people might be doing things for other reasons. And I don't know. I just remember a friend of mine a while ago had said years ago, um, said she noticed something about another friend of ours, this playgroup we were in and, and noticed that like she, especially, and we had, some how did she word it there was just something different that that we had that she did not as far as and it was related to faith she could just kind of tell there was just something different anyway (laughs) just not feeling comfortable enough in their own skin or just not feeling like didn't have that like I feel comfortable even if I make a mistake I'm okay you know, I mean, I think that sometimes yeah. you can see that in folks where they, they, mm-hmm. they just feel like they got to be, you know, on all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it makes me think of, you know, you can feel on in different aspects of your life where, you know, with Christianity and my faith, I mean, again, still having doubts or wanting to wrestle with stuff, but I feel much more secure where, you know, I feel more comfortable trying to go out there and, you know, potentially make a mistake and know that I've got, you know, that support. Whereas I actually just had a conversation with, with one of my bosses at work where with work, I tend to be, I try to be a perfectionist in a lot of things where I, it's like, you can spit shine an apple so many times and it's not going to get any shinier kind of thing. Um, And it was one of those, um, again, where it's like, okay, we're in faith in my personal life. You know, I I am not as afraid to make a mistake, but then in work, I'm like, okay, I've got to have it just right. And they're like, okay, back off a little bit. Like it's okay to make mistakes. Um, It's just like, you obviously do it. And some things it's like, we just need to get it done faster or it's like you don't need to go through the 20 step like program with all <laughs> everybody's boss uh, going up all the way through the food chain kind of thing. But it, it is, you know, we all have our strengths and comforts in different areas. And it's, you know, we can do what we can in, in Christianity to give those, give that security to others. So how do we spend the next week or two weeks or however long or the rest of our lives maybe um, kind of like feeling that you're standing on a rock and showing that that makes a difference if you have a rock to stand on? Um, So maybe with feeling, you know, a, a simple thing could be, you know, think through who in your life has given you that sense of comfort and security and, you know, thank them. Like, well, even if it's just a simple thank you or, you, you know, however you want to show that gratitude, you know, show, show that, you know, thankfulness to them and then look at who in your life may be that, again, as, as we've talked, you can, you can try like sticking with the smaller things to make it, you know, more doable, especially if you can do it more in your everyday life. But, um, you know, see if there's anyone in your life that you can, you can lend that compassion to that. If, if you get the sense, you know, that they may not feel like they're on solid ground, you know, reach out and see what you can do to support them. Yeah, I think that's great. Oh, good. 
<laughs> good. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I should keep it relatively short and sweet then for, for this week. Um, so as you go out, you know, continue to wrestle. Um, as we've mentioned before, uh, this, this podcast came out of looking to do an alternative service service based around getting together to talk and wrestle. And of course, bad timing, right? You know, we were starting to ramp up right when, you know, lockdown started. So now as we're starting to get closer to, you know, more normalcy, we're going to be looking to, to kick that off again. So that, that's at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Westlake, Ohio. If you're near the area, stay tuned. Um, you know, our, our various social media platforms and through this podcast that hopefully we'll have some, some more news in, in the next few months at least of when we're going to kick that off. And we hope to see you there in person as, as things allow um, so please, you know, be safe and keep wrestling and, and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, pass this along to friends who might be interested and we look forward to wrestling with you guys in the future.